hello, hi everyone. My name is uh, Amy Stevenson. I am a writer, and I'm delighted to be here on this wonderful panel, uh, very creative panel, uh, where uh, ideas come from. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is just really briefly introduce everyone who's here, and then get them, as before, to talk a little bit about themselves. So to my right, I have Chris Dicker, who is head of development at Jam. Um, next to him, we have Tom Moore, who's a co-founder of Cartoon Saloon, filmmaker as well. Um, next to Tom, we've got Peter Hirsch, who is a writer. He's got over 25 years' experience in writing. He's written from some amazing, really prolific children's shows like Arthur and Curious George. And then finally, we have Sebastian Lodenbach, which I hope I've said properly because you're French. And Lodenbach. 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 Okay, okay. Lodenbach. <laughs> um, who is a very talented uh, filmmaker whose film is actually screening tomorrow. It's The Girl Without Hands. So. Um, Guys, I, yeah, I might just get you to just very briefly kind of talk about, you don't necessarily have to talk about ideas right now, but just about how you got to where you are in your career. So Chris, if, you, if you're happy to start. Then. Yeah, well, uh, I actually was in college with Tom and uh, Paul Young was in our class as well. And like everyone else at the time, there was no industry here really. Um, I decided to get the boat. <laughs> Yeah. And get out of Dodge, and uh, Tom, Tom stuck around with Paul, obviously, and they built their own studio. But there was nothing like this, so like John touched on it earlier on, it's a fantastic opportunity for the students to, uh, to get out and talk to people, and kind of hopefully in five years' time there'll be students up here with their own studios after opening up, you know, just mm. building the industry. Yeah. And then, so from that, I went across to, uh, well, I'd been in Disney when I was in college, and then I went over to the US and I couldn't get a visa. And then I came back to the UK and I started working with Warner Brothers and we did a couple of uh, video games, like we did Crash Bandicoot and oh, all those kind of games and Lego Star Wars. And then we started making TV shows and direct to um, DVD features um, using some of the Lego properties and stuff like that. So, And then I came back to work at Jam. I'd always been threatening to come back and um, I was very good friends with the boys and then we just kind of hooked up about four cool. and a half years ago. Lovely. That's it. Cool. Very nice. Tom? Um, yeah, I, uh, as Chris was saying, we were in college together. I think we graduated in 99. Yeah. yeah. And uh, myself and Paul and Nora and the gang of us set up a cartoon saloon then. And um, we um, we produced our own feature films and our own TV series. And now we're just starting an, a new studio in Kilkenny called uh, Lighthouse with Mercury Filmworks in Canada. So I'm still trying to direct and co-direct my own features and uh, be creative director for those studios as well. Yeah. Can I just ask, so what college were you guys in? Just to... Ballier. Ballier. Okay, Ballier. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and yeah, Peter, if you, just a brief introduction. Yeah. Um, well, I was a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start somewhere, Peter. You got to start somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> and um, I was, I'd always wanted to be a writer and so uh, I would sort of go from working on a play to working on a book to outlining it and then being frustrated and just, oh, I'll start writing right away. And then not knowing where I was going. And it would sort of seesaw while I was being a security guard back and forth between those things. Um, and then uh, someone offered me a job to write for money, which I was a <laughs> you know, sort of fantasy at that point. Um, and that was Arthur, and it was 1995. Um, so, and for a while, you know, it, it was a gig. It was a good gig. Um, and then at some point, I guess about two years in, I realized that, um, well, if I, if I was, if I'm a little bit flexible, I can really write about almost anything I want, you know, except for cur cursing, kicking, and sex. But other than that, you know, and you know, there are even ways to do that. But um, but other than that, and that that sort of changed things for me. And then it then it became uh, a career. So cool. that was my trajectory. Lovely. Um, and Sebastian, yeah, just a little bit about yourself. Okay, so first I'm French. Uh, <laughs> nobody's <laughs> French. I'm French, I don't speak English, but I'm happy you, to be here. Sebastian, you speak very good English, very um, good English, better than my French. Thank so. you. Um, what can I say? Um, I'm a film director. I'm, I'm, I made uh, like seven short films, uh, very different. And uh, I'm also a teacher in Paris um, since 2001 in animation. 
Uh, and so I made this, this feature, very special feature, uh, The Girl Without Hands, uh, like uh, three years ago. I, I began the film three years ago. Uh, and there's my producer here in, in, in the audience. Give us a little wave, producer. Yay, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Sebastian, did you study, did, did you study I, um, yes. film or? Uh, I studied uh, animation, uh, but uh, in a, uh, in uh, art school, very general okay. art school. Okay. Okay. So cool. Pleasure. So now we're going to tell you all how to write ideas. Now we're <laughs> we're going to. I just want to. I guess it's such I, a. I don't know where this come from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very I'm curious. Tell me. Yeah. 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 Maybe I can learn something. I mean, that's <laughs> we're, that's why we're all here. Hopefully, yeah. one of us has a clue as to. No, I think it's it's obviously it's a very general topic and it's so different for everyone. But I might start with you, Chris, and just ask you, so you work in development, so not only yeah. are you kind of creating your own ideas, but you're also going out there and looking for other people's ideas. Do they, I mean, for, say for example, your ideas, do they come to you as eureka moments or are they kind of long, kind of maybe this, maybe that, just yeah, maybe talk yeah. a bit about how it works for you if that's all right. Yeah, cool. Um, I guess nobody really knows. I mean, no. the thing of it is, like, where do ideas come from? I was Googling it outside know, 10 yeah, seconds yeah, ago. Yeah. <laughs> What's this panel Where about? do ideas come from? <laughs> Google. Um, <laughs> And it's it's because it's so big and broad and course, conceptual, yeah. isn't it? Like, yeah. You know. Um, but for me personally, I like when, when I develop. I try to, especially for for young kids, preschoolers, is kind of going internal. So, like finding things that like would appeal to me as a kid. Yeah. And certainly appeal to them. So from a, um, I guess from a point of view that you're trying to make sense of their world mm -hmm. for them. You know. So I think that's where like. Ideas, ideas come from for, for preschoolers. Then you've got like high concept ideas that you can kind of do for all the kids and you can kind of go a bit wilder and they're, they're kind of just things that you can just be inspired by, I guess. Yeah. Like, it comes from life, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. I, mean do you, I guess, do you find that... Um, you don't sit down and go, right, I'm going to come up with yeah. an idea. <laughs> Here's my notepad. Here's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you find, though, that you are drawn more to, initially, more to stories or to characters? Like, what is the thing you find easier to come up with? Um, well, for TV, it's different. I'm guessing for features, it's it's you're looking at the story, like the the big story. Yeah. Whereas with for a show, you've got like multiple, like you know, one one show may have 52 episodes, so you got to come up with 52 stories. Yeah. So you're never going to sit down and go, okay, well, I'm going to work on the story for the first one, even though yeah. you will get there. It's kind of like the the idea itself is never the story to begin with. Yeah. I don't think it's all, yeah, for it's, TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair you enough. Because yeah. you're looking at. Um, what inspires you internally? I yeah. think. I'm yeah. To, that, that's how I would. That's how I would go about it. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, Tom, with you, you um, obviously have had some amazing success with two of your um, feature films, *The Secret of Kells* and *Song of the Sea*. They are obviously uh, your your ideas. But I was it for Secret or Kells that was written that was scripted by someone else. Is that right? Yeah, or, but it yeah. came in after we'd done a few drafts. Okay. Yeah. How how do you find that when it's your idea and it's something that's obviously very close to you? How difficult do you find it to to almost to give it away or to let someone else have a go at it? Do you do you struggle with that or? Um, no, I was really lucky on both the features that I had collaborators, like people that I felt were disciplined writers. Mm -hmm. um, I was sitting here just looking out there, thinking about Song of the Sea. This is where the idea for Song of the Sea came. From wow. 2005, I was down here with my family, and um, Puff and Rock and Song of the Sea came out of that trip. And uh, I'm always telling the lads they should send me on more holidays. <laughs> um, and the, you know, th those That's are they yeah. Happen, right? We have to be kind of in it. There's, I think, there's different states of mind. You know, there's open mm -hmm. and closed. You know, so the open bit, the idea can come from anywhere. It could be with Secret of Kells. It was like, how can we, how can we show like Irish traditional art in animation yeah and then we looked at the history and then we looked at the folklore and then we found the characters you know that's interesting so your main focus for that was the that style totally stylistic backwards. It's totally yeah. backwards. It's the way it shouldn't it's meant to be story first isn't it but we we were animation students and that's what our passion was yeah and then when working with fabrice he helped us focus our very sprawling draft on brendan the main character and and uh, i learned a lot working with him and then yeah. for song to see i had the tone i had a storyline an overall storyline and when Will came on, um, uh, Will Collins, um, he had a similar sensibility and, and worked with Nora, who's partner in the studio, who's co-director in Secret of Kells, head of story on song, and together we kind of 
uh, found the characters. I think, as Chris says, it comes from real lived experience is what mm -hmm. gives it longevity. The idea is, you know, Fabrice had a very crude saying. He used to say, ideas are like assholes. Everybody has one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he true. said, the ideas aren't worth that much. It's, no. the, it's, the, um, it's what, how you build it what you and how you do with them, I guess. And stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, Peter, for you, you're, you're coming in at the, the script point. So, say, when you started working on Arthur, that's a, a show that already existed. Yeah. Um, how, how do you find that when you're working with an idea that's already there? Do you, I don't know, is it intimidating? Do you just kind of put your own stamp on it? I, just if you could talk a bit about that. Well, you have, to, you have to learn it. I mean, it depends yeah. uh, when you come in on a show. Um, if you're uh, lucky enough to be in on a show at, at, at the outset, then you could really have a lot, of, a lot of influence. But even if you come on, even if the show lasts a couple of years and you come on at some point, <laughs> I still uh, always try and draw from my own life. In other words, especially with a show that's been on for a year, you know, you're not going to pitch like Arthur has a birthday. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. <It's>, oh, <laughs> you know. Chances are you're just pitching the pilot. Yeah. But, um, so you know, uh, so I would, uh, for instance, um, I have a friend uh, who. Every time you tell them a problem, they give you advice. You know, they sort of sit there, well, what you should really do is this, you should really do that. So, um, and even though I couldn't articulate this to him, what I really wanted was like, no, I just want you to shut up and listen. <laughs> That's actually a skill. So then I would take that and think like, oh, could that be an Arthur episode? Um, so sometimes for me, I, ideas like beachcombing, you know, you sort of like, you know that you're looking for one, and then you go and look around and think like, um, you know, uh, yeah, like, uh, oh, a car breaks down or something like yeah. that, you know. how I need to spark something yeah, or, a, yeah. So that's for me. Okay. Um, Sebastian, with um, your movie, The Girl Without Hands, it's based on a Grimm's brother um, story, which are notoriously dark, but I guess a lot of them have turned into, you know, big movies, big maybe Disney movies or... What drew you to that story, that particular story? And m might you be able to tell us briefly the story of, of, of The Girl Without Hands? Um, actually, I, I choose this, this uh, fairy tale because uh, like 15 years ago, a producer uh, proposed me to make the adaptation of this, of this tale. Okay. I didn't know the tale. It is not famous. Uh, in France or in Germany, it is not well known. So uh, I discovered this, this fairy tale, and it it it, um, it moved me. So I wanted to do the adaptation. And um, uh, the story of this production is a, a little bit strange because we worked uh, with a tiny team to wrote, to write a script and to make the storyboard and everything, but uh, we didn't find the money to to. Um, to complete uh, this this first uh, project, and um, uh, I, I have to, to 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 tell the story. To if, if you can, to, just just very briefly, just so people uh, people might not be aware uh, of the. Yes, but uh, you 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 have to, to go to see the movie. That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't That's want, true. I don't okay, to fair enough. Spoil. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers. We're going to go. Um, do, do you? I said we're going to chat about it tomorrow. It's one of my favorites in Annecy. If anyone hasn't seen it. Uh, okay. So go and see it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's very dark and cruel, and it is the, the, the story of, of a young girl who lost her hands because of her father, um, who was manipulated by the devil. That's the okay. beginning of the story. Yeah. And, uh, but only the beginning, and the end yeah. is <laughs> it's more... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, maybe we can talk a little bit now about... Uh, so let's say you have an idea and you want to get it made. That's obviously, it can be a very, very long process. I'm sure, Chris, you're like, you work in development. I'm sure there's things you've been developing for years and years and yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, when, when you're going to a broadcaster or to try and get funding, um, how, how much do you allow yourself to compromise? Because there's always going to be compromises. Yeah. But how, I mean, I just, I just find that whole process quite interesting because up until that point, it's probably just been your idea. And well, your your baby, but then you have to yeah. compromise. Well, in Jam, in Jam, we'll work. I work closely with Al. Yeah, and he was creative director. Um, and 
you know, the thing about ideas are, is like Tom touched on as well, it's like collaborating. Is so important, like because there's no point in you having an idea and it's just sitting in your own head. You got to yeah. talk to people about it and kind of work it out. And the exciting, well, one of the things that I like about ideas is, is that you might come up with it, but then you try and break it instantly. Because you know somebody else is going to break it if you, if you don't. So you're yeah. trying to like massage it and get to the to the rub of it, really. Um, so yeah, I'd collaborate all along the way and. You know, everybody has people that they show things to, that they yeah. respect their opinions, I think. And um, yeah. it's you important know, yeah. to surround yourself with those people as well, I think, when ideas, because you don't want the wrong person coming into the mix too soon, you know? So it's, uh, that's, yeah. that's pretty much part of, of the, the, process the process that I go through. Um, but, like, you're touching on, like, you know, how, like, when does it... Because I guess, you know, it's, it's your idea and then you, you go to get it made and it doesn't always go your way. And how, I don't know, how do you cope with that? Do you oh, sort of pick, just pick your battles, is it? Or? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> that's, you know, that is, it's the road less traveled, mm -hmm. you know, because it will break your heart. It's an absolute roller coaster. Like, you know, you, you think you did well, you go to a market, you pitch, and everybody loved it, and then no emails come, or yeah. no phone calls, and everyone's like, oh, it's not gonna happen, is it not gonna happen? And then you get a call, and then it's gonna happen, and then it's like, you know, all that, and that's before you even get to production. Yeah. <laughs> you know? The things that you might have thought were real important about the idea change. I yeah. think Laura's here from Dog Ears, who uh, co-produced Puff and Rock with us, and for ages I thought the Puffins shouldn't talk. That it should be like a narration. Wow. Okay. And then they did a test with the puffins talk, and I went, ah, that's really cute. That's yeah. better. <laughs> so I backed yeah, off, yeah. you know. And it, that's interesting because I can't imagine Puff and Rock without their yeah, little voices. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But that I was guess. the pleasure of a show because I didn't direct it or anything. I had an initial idea, and uh, Lily uh, co created and built it up. Morris directed the lads and dog ears, hugely collaborated. Yeah. And so, from the germ of a notion, what the show ended up wasn't yeah. mine at all. It was yeah. collaborative uh, creation in a way. Well, most things are. Anything <coughs> yeah. that you see on screen is oh, a yeah. huge collaboration. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah, you got to try and hold your vision as much as you can. But like, that's why I think, for me anyway, if the if the the idea stems from an internal um, concept, you know, whether you're trying to work on, you know, a show that like, what is curiosity to kids or. Mm. You know, That's what is friendship to give? Like, if you, if you go internal, all, that usually is the thing that stays, mm -hmm. actually. That's the true line that kind of goes through it. Yeah. Um, all the rest of it can be... Can change. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. But once the heart of the show stays yeah. the same, I think, that's, that's really important. Tone or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Chris, I, no, I remember talking to you before and you um, disc discussing ideas, I guess, right. and you telling me... Uh, which I think is really nice to give an example of how an idea mm -hmm. might come about. It was an idea for um, a show that you guys are, are developing. Yeah. Um, and it came from, was it your niece? Yeah, yeah. So I, like, I, I think stories like this, and I feel like if you're, you know, as a student out there and you're trying to figure out how do I get an idea, where do I go, how do I do yeah. it, it, I think this is a really lovely story of how it, one yeah, can yeah. just come to you. So. How you can steal ideas from yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. Have kids. Google They're have, great. Have children. Google and kids is where you get all your ideas, I'm yeah. telling you. No, uh, the, the idea came from I've got six boys. Um, so my niece came over, she was four years old, and she had just got uh, glasses, you know? And this was the idea for Jessie and Essie. And basically, she came over to our house to have a sleepover that night, and the first day she, like, she lost them. There was mud all over them. She was on the trampoline trying to hold on to them and all that kind of stuff. And that night, she, that night, so they were. I was saying, like, you know, how do you feel about your new glasses? And she was like, oh, I'm not so sure. And then we made up this story about this little girl. And when she put on glasses, she could see cartoon characters living in our world. And all the boys are like, Give me a go, give me a go. So <laughs> she was the cool one then with the glasses, you know. So we named them her in spectacles instead of her spectacles. And um, that's how that came about. And then like we were just sitting around going. How cool would it be actually to make a show about a kid that can see characters? So that they're usually the, the reason for all of life's little mysteries, all these characters. Mm. And um, that's where that came from. But, yeah. you know, that was just an on the spot kind of a thing yeah. that just came out. It yeah. wasn't, it, but, but I, it came from a place happen, of trying though. to take in, again, it's an internal thing where you go, okay, how can I make something that's a negative into a positive? And, and that came from that place of trying to give her a feeling. Yeah, you know, and it's such a universal thing for yeah, kids yeah, yeah. as well. It's and I think when you go internal, the reason why I like to go internal with it is because kids, there's so much noise on TV at the moment and there's so much options for kids that they tend to forget shows really, really quick. But when you, when you talk to somebody, mm -hmm. they'll, like, you'll all forget what we're talking about now, mm -hmm. but you won't re you'll remember how somebody made you feel. Mm -hmm. 
And I think if you can make somebody feel something, yeah. that, that's the important part. Yeah. In the yeah. Part. Yeah. And people, um, you know, if you have a conversation with someone and you keep it on a level of small talk the whole way through, and then someone is just disarmingly honest and reveals yeah. a kind of painful truth yeah. That, yeah. that you identify with, yeah. you'll always remember that conversation. Yeah. That's what you're always looking for, I find, that painful truth in a character's journey that yeah. everyone feels like, ouch. Yeah. And then you know you're onto something. Yeah. yeah. It's emotional. It's totally yeah. emotional. A universal yeah. kind of theme, Authenticity or whatever, you know. Well, that's it. Emotions are universal as well, <coughs> you know. Yeah. Um, Peter, this, well, this is slightly, I suppose, maybe a little bit off topic, but I'm just really Thank interested you. in your... No, what you mentioned about... Security. So you, yeah. Security. Is this an intervention? <laughs> <laughs> We've all gathered here today to... No, it was, it was the security guard thing, and it actually, yeah. Tom, what you're saying about someone just saying something that's a real truth, like, I mean, you know, I, like, I, I write as well, and I've had my fair share of, like, bizarre, terrible jobs that are nothing to do with writing. But do you find that you find inspiration in, in those, like, did, you know, did you find inspiration as a, as a, um, a security guard? Is that somewhere where you... Uh, yeah, it was actually a children's wear building, too. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think if you're a writer, you're always looking for inspiration. You're always hungry, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, where's that next idea going to come from? And I think good ideas should be like itchy, you know? Um, so sometimes you get an idea and it has nothing behind it. Like, oh, Kevin has a magic umbrella. Uh, you know, and it's kind of like that'll sit with you for a while and say like, why? So what? Um, and then you'll, you know, you'll realize, but, but if it's itchy, it'll, it, you'll, it'll stay with you. And then you realize like, oh, Kevin has a magic umbrella and he's someone who's always afraid it's gonna rain. And it's like, well, what is that? Well, you know, that means he's, he's a fearful person. He needs this magic umbrella. Mm -hmm. Oh, now what's that umbrella like? Well, that umbrella's braver yeah, or yeah. something like that, you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, as a security guard, <laughs> I, was, um, I was terrified. I just had a club. But, um, but, <laughs> I mean, um, but, uh, no, I mean, I think it's like terrifying, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But for that, it was all about, um, you know, that, that, that was about what I got from that was boredom, okay. you know, and, and how rich and important boredom is. Because we're very rarely bored now, because there's always something to distract you. Mm -hmm. But if you have 12 hours of sitting in a lobby, you know, you can only play so much solitaire yep. before <laughs> you have to invent something or use, use your, your, your brain to mm. amuse yourself, you yeah. know, so, uh, yeah. I have an interesting tip, if you don't mind me oh, sharing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, that I never, it's the kind of thing that you'd never think would work. It sounds corny, but um, Ross and I were um, talking to a friend of mine, Jim Capabianco. He's a head of story, or he was a head of story in Pixar. He's the director now himself. But um, um, and we were develop We had, had the n slightest notion of an idea about the Wolves of Ossery for our new film, Wolfwalkers. And he told us to write a list. This is what he did for his shorts. Of, write a list of things you love and write a list of, things, of stuff you hate and then join them up in ways that you wouldn't expect. And that's how we came up with the Wolfwalkers. Yeah, and yeah. it worked, wow. worked really well. I mean, Will came on and sculpted the script with us and we would dug in and found the characters and the, all the stuff Chris and everyone's talking about. But the, the initial idea came from literally Ross and I saying, going, right, the Wolves of Ossery, this could be, like, it's a, it's a legend from around Kilkenny, but it could go anyway. Yeah. And we narrowed it down by doing that list of yeah. things we loved and hated. And those things are so, um, intrinsic to, you know, pa you've got a passion. Yeah, you either love it or hate it. And, and so putting up, building those in there, you yeah. know, so we end up with a, yeah, with a, yeah. a film about, I don't know, Oliver Cromwell and stuff. To, to yeah. And it's playful, isn't it? Like, yeah. That's yeah. the whole idea. It's yeah, that's still it. a game. It's, 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 that's yeah. the open, yeah. that's the yeah. John Cleese thing, the open thing. A, kind yeah. of, a game like that makes you in an open space, or boredom makes you in an open space. Yeah. And then afterwards, the hard work is when you close down and say, okay, now there's the idea. Yeah. Let's really make what it work. What do I do? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I guess I might just open it up to the floor and see if anyone has any questions for any of our panellists. Is there... Um, hi, yeah, if you want to um, speak loud and clear. <laughs> oh, we got a microphone, nice. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, uh, Alex from Giant Animation. Uh, but, so how do you guys tackle uh, when your kind of artistic and, and mental blocks when they happen? What, what do you do? Do you have any kind of special 
things that you do or you know. just bang your head <laughs> off the wall usually and the, the, there is you just gotta let them go like you can't really force it i don't think well, I can artistic anyway. sorry just just for sebastian's benefit <laughs> and for everyone else just how do you tackle um artistic blocks so oh. when you hit a stumbling block you can't think of where to go next what do you what do you do I don't know. I found that most of the writers I've worked with, they're, they at some point they just half become therapists or best friends or something. You know, we end up talking our way out of. Uh, if we back, find ourselves in a corner, we go looking for something in our own life experience that kicks us back out into yeah. into space again. You know, but that's for feature. Are you talking about like concept or like or when you're in the middle of it? Because it's, it's two different things, I think. Because you can hit walls when you're in the middle, and yeah. I think. Yeah. You can work those out, like because the people that you surround yourself with. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, I think, I think, yeah, it's, it's kind of like two. I suppose like be two different questions. Like initially, when you know when you're trying to find that idea, but you're pushing yourself too hard, and right. then you hit you hit a wall. Like what? Yeah, do you, yeah. What do you have? Get to out do? and walk yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. Go look look at that. Like. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think the most one of the most important things as well is to actually understand the market that you're trying to you know sell to or like you know if you're coming up with an idea for a kids show you got to really understand what's on the what's on the screens at the moment like what they're looking at and you know there's a lot of research that goes in as well because you don't want to make another you know another puff and rock there's already puff and rock or you know the, the, there's no yeah. need to to do yeah. that like it's as well, I, I sometimes feel as well that uh, if, there's no, if there's no input, there's no output. So, you know, you could be sitting there at your desk or wherever you write for a day or two days. And, and like you said, Tom, like you, sometimes you just need to get out. You need to go to a gallery. You need to go to a film. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not always just, you know, sitting there. It's inspiration strikes in, in the weirdest of places, I think. Um, so that's... Uh, well, you got to live, don't you? Like, that's part of the whole process is, like, actually living. If you have no yeah. life, there's like, because your work should be a reflection of mm. exactly. a lived experience. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't have a lived experience, you've nothing to say, really. Exactly. Yet. Yeah. Which I think can be difficult, some, certainly from a writing point of view, because it can be quite a solitary existence and quite an isolating existence. And a lot, you know, you have to break out of that and come to things like this and meet yeah, people yeah. and live, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have we got any other questions in the audience? Hi, is the microphone knocking around there, or? Thanks, Kieran. And um, just this this woman here. Hey, um, if you ever have a really really good idea, but you just can't find any way to adapt it to a movie or television, <coughs> and you're just constantly trying to adapt it, and um, eventually you might grow to not hate your idea, but you might just really find it difficult to find any way to make it work. Do you, can you recommend any ways to like fall in love with your project again if you're really tired of it, but you know it's a great idea? <laughs> I usually, I mean, my trick is I just use all my friends, rope them in, like collaboration thing again. They find another way of looking at it. I think people talked about this a few times already this morning. Having other inputs, if you're getting tired of your idea, Having someone else's, they'll put a fresh perspective on it and they'll make you fall in love with it again, I think. Mm. Do you ever maybe put ideas on the back burner? Yeah, I was just about to say yeah. that. Just leave it oh, for yeah. a while and, you know. That's true, is that? Sometimes there's, you know, a, a sort of stripping away process, too. So you have to remember, well, what, what is it really behind this idea that makes it an obsession for me, you know? Um, so sometimes the things you get stuck on are actually details. So like it has to be, it has to have that. It has to be about a girl in a red raincoat, or it has to be, you know. Yeah. And that's actually not what's important about it. What, what's important about it is what you're talking is that some some sort of emotional need, you know. So that's what's so interesting about how an idea can morph when you're open. You know, you don't get stuck on it being a girl in a red raincoat or whatever. You got, why is she in the whatever? You know, you get to the, the authentic theme, I guess it is, underneath and, and honor that. And then it, it comes fresh again, you know. Yeah. But there is sometimes there is a point where an idea has been beaten to death and you do have to let go, which is yeah, painful. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you just have to go. That's it. Not for this format. This yeah. isn't going to yeah. ever, you know, this might be a, a comic or something or a poem or something. I don't know, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. 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 
I think uh, an important skill to learn is that you will always have more ideas. That's, That's something that I, for so long, didn't. I, I would hold on to an idea. But you will, there will always be other ideas. I think that's what Fabrice meant with his very crude way of saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, have we, is there any other questions? That any, okay. Yeah. Do you want to just pass the microphone down? Um, sorry, I don't know who was first, so maybe just. Uh, hi, yeah, Connor from Ali Furnish. I was wondering, like, how precious should you be with an idea, or like, should you know when your input is finished on it? I don't think you should be precious at all. That's just my personal take on it. I don't even know when. I can't think of an idea that. Yeah, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes I think, you know, there, there should be an industry course on collaboration. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because um, it's not immediately apparent how to collaborate, you know? Um, and when you really have to stick to your guns and say, you know, I'm gonna. Ch I'll change anything, everything, but I won't change this. <laughs> you know, um, but that's all about. I mean, f for the for the most part, um, yeah. I mean, you, I, if you're a creator, you you'll have your heart broken all the time, right? So you get used to it. <laughs> but <laughs> but there'll there'll always be, you know. Um, I've had, yeah, I've had creative partnerships that worked really well to a point, mm -hmm. and then the project was having to become something else, and my original co-director might go, well, this isn't what I wanted to make anymore, right. and we agree to disagree, and you know, they might take a different position on the project or move on to a, something of their own, and sometimes you just have to be open to that happening if, if yeah. you know, things evolve and you can't be precious, or if you can't not be precious, you might have to step aside at a certain point and let someone else. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I guess there's that thing of, you know, you have to kill your darlings and that is a really hard thing to do when it's an idea that you love but for whatever reason it's it's not being picked up or other people aren't seeing it and and sometimes you, I think a good thing to remember is like as we were saying before is that there are you will have other ideas and even that idea that you might have to kill could Produce yeah. something else entirely. I've learned to really trust that kill your darlings feeling, yeah. and especially in editing and stuff. After the thing is down in some form, and then people are giving you notes, and you go, "Oh, that's really painful. Why did it want me to change that?" Yeah. That, that gives you a feeling. Why? Why is that bit hard to let go of? And you give if you can defend it and not change it because you've got a good defense for it, then maybe you should keep it. Yeah. But if you can't really defend it, then it's really a good note, and you go, "Oh, yeah. that's." I'm, I'm onto something if I have to kill a darling. You know, it's yeah. making it better. It feels that way to me. Anyway. And I think, like, you know, people, like, ideas, it depends on what an idea is, what you class an idea. Yeah, which is, like, you know, like we could have a whole panel about that. Yeah, yeah. What, because what, what do idea? you class an idea? Like, yeah. you know, if you've got a girl in a red raincoat who just likes to dance in the rain, that's not really an idea. Well, that's an image. Yeah, you know what I mean? It is. It is. And I think, I think that's, that's important to understand. Like, and that's what we're saying about living your life and actually having something to say. If you've got something to say, I think that's an idea. Yeah. See, this is what I don't you know? get about the whole um, Hollywood paranoia about, like, oh, we can't show you anything. Because, like, no one's going to make, even if everyone decides to make a, a film about bottles of Ballygown or something, do you know, everyone's going to make a different film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the, exactly. The, the, the subject matter isn't the idea. Yeah. You know, in, or the subject matter isn't it's the, what you do with it, isn't the value in the idea. It's how it's, how it's delivered and created. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we probably have time for one tiny, really final question. Does anyone? Yeah, hi, if you want to, just behind you there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My question is, uh, what's the secret to writing good dialogue? Oh, good question. <laughs> to have good dialogue. Yeah. Good, yeah. How do you write good dialogue? It would, does anyone want to? Um, Peter, I'm kind of looking in your direction. Well, well, what is a good dialogue? What, 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 what is, is good what dialogue? Is good yeah. I mean, yeah, with, so, um, so most of the shows I write are 11 minutes long or, or shorter. So that means that um, every line of dialogue actually has to, has to say something. You yeah. don't have a lot of time. But this is just for these shows, you know, for a movie or a grown-up TV show, it's different. So, you, so that line of dialogue has to be doing something. It's real estate. So, um, and ideally, it should be doing two things, <laughs> at least. And so it could be some information that, that furthers the plot, but it also should be something, if possible, that reveals something about the character, too. Yeah. Because your space is so limited. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's why there are multiple drafts, you know? Um, so, you know, with your first draft, you just 
get it out there, you know, have people, it'll yeah. usually be too long. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I always find that dialogue is the best thing to do as you go through iterations, drafts and animatics is get rid of as much of it as you can. Yeah. And it's painful for writers because that's the thing that they wrote that's <laughs> said by... Yeah. Sometimes you might have a really expensive actor and yeah. they end up with very few actual lines because you've been so <laughs> good at finding just the ones that... Yeah. Do, do. Or if yeah. you can show it. It's, if you can show that's it. even better. Visually yeah. to show it instead of saying it. That's I always it. look at a script look, when I see the animatic when I'm lucky enough to and writers should always see the animatic. Yeah. I always think it's too talky. Yeah. You know? That's it. Yeah. I, which never occurred to me when Sometimes I was looking at the Sometimes you need a dialogue in a script so a reader can read it and get what's going on. And when it's an animatic, you don't need a dialogue anymore because yeah. you can see what's going on. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it shouldn't be doing both anyway. Yeah. I, 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 oh, sorry. No, For the girl I, without hands, I wrote the dialogues at the end. Ah, did you? Really? Yes. I, I so made the film without, without any dialogue, and oh, I wrote all the dialogues at the, at the end. Wow. And it so was completely... Oh, there is no storyboard. You post up. That's a re that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. So I guess that's a, a I had to I had to see the film to 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 know uh, the dialogue the dialogue lines. Yeah. Know, so to know the characters. It was a, a interesting. completely really different way to, yeah. to make a film. Uh, would you do that would you do that again? Would you work that way again? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 but I felt very free. It was yeah. it was uh, yeah. Great. I, I think um, as well it could be, I mean, this is such a basic thing to say, but reading it out loud or becoming friends with actors, becoming friends with people who are happy right. yeah. to, to like, yeah, because until you say it out loud or someone else says it, says it out loud, it, it could just not work oh, yeah. or it could work perfectly. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's... Some dialogue that you think is really emotional and great, and then you hear just a scratch actor do, and it's like Oprah or something. Yeah, you're like, oh, <laughs> did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, oh, we might do it. Time for, yeah, one more question then. For Wolfwalkers, I'd love to do something in a completely different style, and even if I don't design the characters and get someone deadly to do totally different, I'd love to do that, because I think you need to keep pushing out, not get. Um, but the other, the, we had talked about this a bit in the studio, because years ago I read a book called uh, Understanding Comics by Scott McLeod, and he talked about two different attitudes to style. There's some artists who are like, fear no art, and every book, everything they do is a different style. And then there's other guys who, they, like Miyazaki, he uses the same style to tell different stories. So he's pushing in other directions. He's, he's kind of content that he knows how to deliver in pretty much the same style over and over again. Some of his characters almost look like reused character designs, but he's telling different stories over and over again within that style. So it's where you put your focus, you know. Um, guys, I think that's all we have time for, but I just want to say a big round of applause to our, our panel here. Thanks, guys. Well done.